Welcome once again to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. Now let's go to Off the Press where we have a quick review of the stories making headlines across Nigeria today. We're going to be speaking with uh, Ademola Kingbala, the publisher of the Podium Media. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Osara. Nice to be here. Yes, thanks for joining us. All right, let's start with the Punch newspapers. Uh, should be... Uh, flashed on your screen in just a few seconds. And um, the big one that you can see there is talking about a new strike looming. Yes, it says, fresh varsity strike looms. Federal government has to resume fight on payment platforms. UTAS lacks tax deduction. We can't pay without deducting uh, tax, declares federal government. Education ministry is wrong. UTAS deducts tax. It encompasses everything, says ASU. Also, Naira slides to 505 to the dollar as CBN stops forex sale to BDCs. Federal government deploys 9,100 coppers in Northwest. Gunmen kill 344, abduct 430 in July. Buhari's UK trip for virtual summit deceptive and appalling, says the PDP. Also, experts blame COVID-19 as states' IGRs shrink by 22% in two years. Still on the Pontius Bonin, plant trees, save your houses from storms, says Ayade. Also, Senate drops CCT chair's assault case as judge goes to court. Reps probe custom killings of five in Oyo, quiz officers. And uh, also, 11 lawyers battle for Igboho's bail. Activists faces more charges. Uh, Uni Lawrence slain female students' uh, autopsy points to strangulation, says a pathologist. And now moving on to the Daily Independent, Let's see what we can also find here. It says here, Benin Republic slams fresh charges on Sunday Boho. Presidency warns staff against disclosing classified information as ministers' oath of secrecy on 42 uh, personnel. Also, ban on forex sales to BDCs, CBN moving to check round tripping and unify FX rates, says analyst. Apex Bank retains benchmark interest rate at 11.5%. COVID-19, uh, 10 cases of Delta variant detected in Nigeria. And five years after, switch to digital TV hits brick wall. PDP berates Buhari over London trip for virtual meeting, while students languish in kidnappers' den. Also, federal government warns Nigerians in diaspora against supporting secessionist groups. Um, Nigerian Bar admits 880 new lawyers. And uh, one other story here. It says IGP orders posting and redeployment of 24 AIGs. To the nation newspapers now. Igboho to Bene Court. I fled Nigeria to avoid being killed. Agitator sent to prison. Lawyer says he is charged with illegal entry into Kotonou. Federal government yet to file paper before court. And of course, no date yet for next hearing. CBN hammers BDCs for aiding graft and money laundering. Only banks to sell Forex as MPC retains CRR and NPR and LR rates. We can also find on the nation newspapers this morning, more PDP governors to defect, says the presidency. Zoning will work against it, it PDP next year. Uh, Oni warns. And also work for the people. Song Wolu tells council chiefs. Um, abductors seek, what, seek uh, 150 million naira to free monarch and others. DPO, six gunmen die in Imo crossfire. I saw a video of that this morning um, of uh, some armed men in vehicles and motorcycles somewhere in Imo state. Really scary. On the Guardian newspapers this morning, in rare courage, CBN weakens BDC operations, stops FX funding. Facts about Nigeria's food inflation, and that's from a survey. It's on The Guardian this morning. Senate chickens out, halts probe of CCT chair for alleged assault. And despite ban in, Niger in, in, in Nigeria, rather, India, Twitter records $1.19 billion revenue in second quarter. Private sector fueling illegal financial flows in Africa, ICPC alleges. And also, Benin Republic files fresh charges against Sunday Boho. Those are the stories that we can share this morning. Mr. Kimbala, welcome once again. I want us to start with uh, the current travails of Sunday Boho in Bene Republic. It doesn't seem to be getting better uh, in any way for him. Yeah, um, it's getting more and more complicated by the day. 
um, against all expectations and against all um, assumptions and predictions, the trial is not even focusing on its extradition at all. It's not focusing on um, requests from federal government to have him return to Nigeria. Uh, the government of the Republic seems to have a different agenda, and the charge that has been preferred against him for now is illegal entry and um, sundry offenses. I, I, I think uh, the government of the Republic is also trying to buy time while diplomatic consultations continue in the background. Uh, this has become a celebrated case uh, that the Benin Republic has found itself in a quandary. I mean, it's like it's torn between satisfying Nigeria's desire and also following its own due process and the rule of law. Um, strangely enough, the federal government of Nigeria has not filed any statement, has not filed any paper before the court. No statement has been issued, and we're just wondering um, what is going on. Okay, um, the citizen of your country has been arrested in a foreign land. We assume that you prompted this arrest. You should tell us something about it. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised the government has not said a word. DSS, Ministry of Justice, nothing has been said. Everything we've heard so far, everything we know so far, has been from the other side, from the government of the Republic. So that, that's, that is a bit strange to me. To be strange. Hopefully, in the um, days to come or the weeks to come, we we'll have more information. And as it is, no date has been fixed for the next court appearance. But between now and then, I believe that consultations will continue in the background, um, negotiations will continue, and hopefully, before the end of the week, we should hear something from from the federal government. But yeah. it, it is quite strange that nothing has been said from Abuja. Yeah, well, I mean, what would you expect that they would say at a time like this? What, what, what should be the statement from the government? Should they be trying to, you know, protect the Nigerian citizen in Benin Republic? Or should they be fighting for his extradition back to Nigeria to face any charges, you know, that they might think of? Yeah, against the background of the fact that he's been declared wanted by the government of Nigeria and he's now being arrested in another country, Naturally, you expect the government of Nigeria to make a statement to the effect that this is, want, this is what we want to happen. This man is wanted in Nigeria. You've arrested him in the Republic. We want him back in Nigeria. Nothing of such has been said. On the whole hand, you could say, hey, this is a bona fide citizen of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Whatever it is that he has done, we're going to send legal representation. We're going to make sure that he is right and well protected. We're going to make sure that he has a right to fair airing. That has not been done also. So that's what I'm saying. It's strange. It's, I, I, I don't know what government is up to. But I, I very much believe that a lot of consultation, a lot of negotiations are going on in the background between the two governments and a compromise should be reached. I also want to believe that the court in the Republic is also buying time, slowing down to allow these negotiations uh, to, to, to move forward. Okay? okay, so either way, a decision has to be taken, whether it will be returned to Nigeria or it will be tried in the Republic. Something has to be done, yeah. All right, now let's move uh, down here to Nigeria and talk about the CBN and its uh, move against yeah. selling uh, Forex to BDCs. It's accusing them of uh, graft and fraud and mismanagement of uh, mm. a foreign exchange. Um, how, how do you see this? I see it as a sign of desperation by the Central Bank of Nigeria. Um, the decision symbolizes two things, basically. One, an attempt by the CBN to yield to pressure by the IMF and the World Bank to unify the exchange rates, and two, an attempt, okay, to, to, to manage the foreign reserves, which has been under undue pressure, okay? And whichever way you look at it, it's, it is asymptomatic of the bigger problem facing the Nigerian economy. Like I said, it's a sign of desperation by a regime that has found it difficult to manage Forex. Okay, foreign exchange management has two sides. You have the demand side, you have the supply side. Unfortunately, we focus so much on the demand side, we're not talking about the supply side. And as long as supply will, uh, continues to outstrip demand, there's nothing anybody can do about it. So what government has done, what CBN has done, is to move the rent, okay? Remove 
the way these generators from the equation and empower banks. Nothing has changed, really. At the end of the day, banks will not be able to meet up with demands. That is the truth. And what will happen? Exchange rates will go up. Already, we are at 505 naira within 24 hours of decision. Because everybody will now go to the banks. Don't forget that those BDCs were created to deregulate the foreign exchange market, to ensure that almost everybody has access to foreign exchange. That has not worked because we don't have enough foreign exchange. Okay, so if you are saying banks should be the only ones to sell foreign exchange, do they have the capacity? So what you will find is that the BDC operators will retain the dollars that they have. They will hold those dollars and create artificial scarcity. Banks will not be able to meet up with demands. People will be forced to go back to build the change. So what will happen? The rate will go up. Yeah, but, but do you it think the, the CBN has... Goal. I don't think anybody can do about that. Yeah, do you, do you think the CBN yes. has um, good enough reasons for, you know, taking these steps? You know, they, they're saying that the BDCs have been a channel, you know, for money laundering and, you know, and graft. So do you think that it had gotten to, is it possible rather, it had gotten to a stage where the CBN needed to take action immediately uh, to ensure a reduction in some of all of this? The reason that the CBN has given sounds credible, but the, but the approach and the solution is not going to work. Okay. The fundamental issue is there is scarcity of foreign exchange. There is scarcity. And once there is scarcity, if you like change your policy 10 times, the same thing will remain. Okay. Are you telling me that banks now, uh, they have suddenly become nice guys, they've suddenly become decent and there will not be corruption? There will be corruption. There will be corruption. We are going back. It, it, this policy has taken us almost 15 or 20 years back to that era where banks had the monopoly of foreign exchange. And I remember vividly when that was the case, it was a matter of whom you knew. And that's what we are going back to now. If the demand is $10,000 and banks have $5,000, they will ration it. Okay? And... Let's look at the bigger picture. Who are the people getting for exchange in Nigeria? Importers. Okay? The manufacturers don't get foreign exchange. Industrialists don't get foreign exchange. Those who really need to produce for us to export and end foreign exchange, they don't get allocations. Banks would rather give this money to importers who bring containers from, 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 from China and sell. Within 60, 90 days, they want the money back. So at the end of the day, banks are going to make a lot of money. They're going to profit from this development at the expense of Nigerian economy. Yeah. Okay. So it, it's it's it, it's it's a very simple situation. As long as you don't have enough foreign exchange to go around, there will be scarcity. There will be shortages, and that will drive prices up. Whether you ban build the change or not, that is not the product that the solution. We are. We are leaving the root cause. We are addressing the symptoms. We need to go back to the supply side of foreign exchange. We need to deliberately come up with policies that will increase the quantum of foreign exchange that is available to us. We need to get the NIDP, Nigeria Industrial Development Bank, the CBN, the commercial banks to focus on giving money to exporters who will end foreign exchange. We are not doing that. And that is so sad. Right. I, 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 I have... Very little confidence in the ability of the current CBA management to take us to the promised land. The monetary policy, the fiscal policies have not been working. Yeah, right. they've not been working. Okay, Kimbola, now let's so, let's yeah. um yeah. let's uh you know quickly move away from there and uh, talk about uh, ASU and the federal government. It's on the punch this morning. It says fresh varsity strike looms yeah. as the uh, federal government ASU resumed fight on payment platforms. You know, they, we're back at it again. And, you know, there is possibilities that there might be another strike. We, Nigeria hasn't, you know, recovered from the nine-month, you know, strike, um, you know, from last year. Um, you know, th these problems don't, don't seem to be going away. We, we still don't seem to be getting into an agreement, uh, you know, with regards to payment platforms for lecturers. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Whenever and wherever you take decisions without consulting critical stakeholders, this is what you find. Okay, uh, Chief M. Kabela of Black Memory is that you don't shave someone's head in his absence. What extent of 
input does ASU have in this new policy? Okay, you want to put lecturers on the particular payment platform. Did you consult them? Did you bring them on board to discuss? Okay, did you ensure that this is what they want? Already, these guys are not happy. Their, their salary is 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 is, 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 is not right about. And at the end of the day, this new platform is taking so much tax away from the major salary that they are earning. Definitely, they will kick. So my candid advice for government is go back to the negotiation table, sit down with ASO, put all your cards on the table, be sincere, be transparent. There will be a solution. I do not think ASO members are so insensitive. I do not think that they are, that they are so recalcitrant that they don't want the best for Nigeria. Okay? But this is, these are people who, are, who, who, who don't feel happy naturally about the way things are going. If you're going to bring any payment platform, you need to carry them along. So, yes, unfortunately, we are going back, and there's nothing anybody can do. If nothing is done, the, the, the strike will go on, and the students will, will, will feel the brunt. Yep. Sad. All right, really sad. Sad. Um, yeah. uh, of course, it's uh, obviously going to be you know, a continuing conversation um, you know, here on The Breakfast. Yeah. We hope that we can bring somebody in to talk about this. So, but let, now let's, let's talk about the president's trip to the UK. Yeah. It says that he's traveling for a virtual yeah. summit, a uh, summit in education. The PDP has called it deceptive and appalling. It's on the top uh, right of your punch newspapers this morning. Deceptive and appalling, that's how it's been described. There's also been criticism yes. uh, with regards to the president's investment in education, yeah. you know, and the reason he's going for a summit when there's not been so much, you know, interest in education here in Nigeria. Yeah, Absolutely. Absolutely. I, 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 I align with that statement by the PDP. The trip is wasteful, it, it's deceptive. We all know that the man is not going for any education, he's going for medical checkup. Fine. If we have a Minister of Education and things are working very well, why should the President be going for a summit on education? At the time, there are so many issues, so many critical issues to be attended to back home. Why should he be the one going? So the trip is wasteful. The trip is deceptive. It's totally unnecessary. I mean, that is not what we need at this time. That's not what we need. A minister of education or somebody in, in, in the ministry could have represented the country. It is not a summit that requires the president to attend. A president who feels that there's so much for him to do at home, a president who, who, who feels the need, okay, to address burning issues back at home will not abandon all of those issues and, 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 and travel abroad to go and attend a virtual summit. I want to believe that that's not the reason why the president is in the UK. And just a that's reminder, the there's, there's still 83 uh, Bethel Baptist uh, students yeah. still in captivity yeah. as we speak. There's exactly. still, you know, a couple of other students who have been kidnapped that are, you know, uh, in, yeah. in captivity. And that really is yeah. one of the things damaging the educational system here in Nigeria, besides the poor yeah. investment and poor funding, besides the fact that yeah. ASU continues to go on the strike. ASU has also mentioned strike. SANU might you know, Absolutely. come up with their own strike. You know, Absolutely. Soon. So, 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 so I, I wonder what the president will be telling the old world when he gets to the summit. When they ask him the questions, school children are being kidnapped, lecturers are trying to go on strike. So what is it that he's going there to do? I really do not understand. So that's why I said that there are more important issues at home for him to attend to than attending that summit. So the PDP is right. That, that trip is wasteful. It, it is totally unnecessary and it's deceptive. Totally deceptive. Let's uh, go to the Daily yeah. Independent. Top right of the Daily Independent shows uh, mm. something concerning the presidency warning staff against disclosing classified information. And it's one of the things that we spoke about this morning, an oath of secrecy uh, being uh, conferred on, uh, on me, of course, staff of the yeah. State House being asked to an oath of secrecy. Uh, is this normal procedure, Mr. Kimbola? Yes, I, I see nothing wrong in that. Um, as long as they, they were not taken to a shrine, to swear, I mean, a uh, 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 confidential code of secrecy is it's a standard procedure in most organizations. When you sign in, when you are being engaged, you sign the form that whatever um, you get to learn about this company stays within this organization. So I, I see nothing wrong in that. But um, more importantly, it, it, um, it, 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 it goes in a long way to tell you exactly the mindset of the presidency. There's no Trust, which is exactly what's, what's going on. There's no trust, and 
that's 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 a bit worrisome because that is the highest seat of government. And if in the midst of all of this we are asking the staff to come and swear to an oath of secrecy, then there's no trust. There's no trust at all, which is worrisome. Uh, but as for the oath of secrecy, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, it's you okay. know, you know, I also yeah. mentioned earlier, you know, that this should be regular procedure. You know, the only challenge that people have pointed out is why this is coming six years after the government, you know, has been in office. And then also, you know, because of the, you know, trust deficit, you know, between the government and yeah. the people, there's always going to be conspiracy theories, you know, concerning all of this. You know, exactly. What is the government trying to hide? And, what, you know, what exactly, yeah. you know, is, is the new information that they're trying to protect and some of all of that. So... Um, yeah. These questions will yeah. always come up. At, at, um, yeah, at, at, at the inception of this um, administration, I remember saying that the biggest problem this government will have is in the area of public relations and communication. And that has come to haunt them six years down the line. I said at the beginning that these guys, are, they are behaving as if they know it all. Femi Adishina and Garba Shiro, they haven't, they haven't done um, very well at all, and it's just so unfortunate. That's so unfortunate. They've, they've not been on top of their game. And um, yeah, okay. serious trust deficit in the presidency. All yeah. right. Um, the Guardian this morning, bottom left of your Guardian newspapers, uh, you can see something on the CCT chair. Um, I think it also made some other paper, but it says that the Senate chickens out, pulls out, or rather halts probe of CCT chair for alleged assault. Um, is, is this a problem, Mr. Kimbola? Mm. We need to know where they're taken out. <laughs> we need to have the facts. Why, why, why did they stop the trial? Okay. Um, don't forget that the CCT has the files of all the senators. Okay. Just like the ICPC. So if the senators suddenly realize that, oh, we shouldn't be going this direction, we need to know why. But it should worry you that someone, a high ranking public official, who was accused of act of public indecency, the Senate suddenly stopping the investigation. We need to know why. We need to know the reason. It shouldn't be so. Okay? The Senate should step on a high moral ground and do what it needs to do. They, they, they need to go ahead and conclude the investigation, but we want to know. Okay? And if they are stopping, they, they need to let us know the reason. A statement should be issued. It, it, isn't it, this, it, you, know, um, you know, a reminder once again of, you know, one of the challenges Nigeria has where we have personalities being bigger than institutions? Because if we have systems and we have institutions that yeah. work smoothly, um, then yeah. there, there sh we shouldn't be hearing of things like this. And people cannot be bigger than the institution. Um, you cannot also be bigger than the system. Exactly. And so uh, this is once again, you know, an, exactly. another... Um, you know, po uh, yeah. uh, points, you know, to make with regards how Nigeria functions. And when a big man does something wrong, it is expected that he would not be punished. Exactly. Remember, last week, we, we, we talked about the NDDC, the probe, the celebrated probe, nothing has been heard. And it's just um, in our nature in Nigeria to start a media trial and somewhere along the line, we drop it. Okay, everything has been done just to fulfill all righteousness, just to satisfy the curiosity of the media, just to make some show. Nothing ever is really going to happen because there's no sincerity of intention right from the beginning. So, yes, you are right. Nigeria is one of the countries where individuals are more powerful than institutions. Look at what happened to the um, ex president Donald Trump. If not for the strength and the durability of the US institutions, the structures, and the processes. Uh, I mean, we, we, we don't know where America will have been today, but at all times, we must invest in building structures and institutions who will end up sustaining our democracy. Absolutely. That is a lesson in all of this. Absolutely. I'm going to yeah. move away from the papers now and just bring your thoughts in on yeah. something that, uh, you know, started yeah. yesterday, uh, started training yeah. yesterday, and that is Pastor Tunde okay. Bakari and his Nigeria for Nigeria yeah. uh, movement. He, he made mention of it, I, I believe, on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Um, where he, of course, shared yeah. his, you know, frustration with the current administration and, you know, spoke extensively mm -hmm. on, you know, the, uh, President Muhammad mm -hmm. Buhari said God is angry uh, with the current administration and there's going to be a Nigeria for Nigeria movement that will change things and will move, you know, the bad eggs aside and, you know, nothing can stop it, you know, and it, it was a lot that he, was, he said. So what are your thoughts? Uh, it's not the first time we're hearing 
you know, of such movements. It's not the first time that we're hearing yeah. people, you know, also promote, you know, such movements. Um, is Tuni Bakari, you know, yeah. doing, you know, the same as we've seen in the past? So it's all motion and no movement as far as I'm concerned. Remember we said that what will rescue Nigeria is a spontaneous mass movement, okay? Spontaneous mass movement like the Arab Spring. That is what will liberate Nigeria. What Pastor Bakari has said, he hasn't said anything new. He has just reminded us everything that we know about this country. But how does it translate all of those things into action? He can do it alone. Okay, you can't do it alone. You you can change the nomenclature from safe Nigeria to uh, Nigeria, Nigeria for, for, for Nigerians. That is fine. But I want to see us taking action. All right. Um, I hate to say it, but people outside Nigeria see Nigerians as being docile, see us as oh, all sand bites, no action. So Pastor Bakari has done very well. I I have watched the video clip several times. And the question I keep asking myself is, so what next? You've done this video, it's gone viral. So what next? Government probably will come after him. He dare the federal government, come and arrest me if you can. Government will go after him, probably invite him for questioning and caution him. And after that, what happens? So mm -hmm. we, we, we've had enough of these sound bites. We need to get organized. 2023 is around the corner. We need to get organized. We need to wrestle power. Okay, the masses should realize the power that they have, which is vested in their voting rights, and this right must be exercised in the right way, so in such a way that the desired change will take place in Nigeria. Anything short of that is just sad, right? Yeah, um, I'm going to quickly play that video for our viewers who haven't, who had not seen it. We should have played it yesterday, actually. But we'll play that clip for you so um, you can get to watch it. And then when we come back, we have one more question for Mr. Akimbola before we go. When I say, change your guards, what you don't understand is this. The moment that happens, the Spirit of God departs on Saul. And Laden on David. And so you'll be making useless decisions. You'll be making terrible mistakes and blunders because the spirit of ill will has come upon you. Somebody say Nigeria for Nigeria movement. I'm letting you know it's about to start. I'm going to champion it. It's going to go like white fire across this nation. Nigeria for Nigerians. You'll be bigger than Save Nigeria group. You have never seen anything like it before. It's a movement propelled by God, Nigeria for Nigerians, to deliver us from the hands of oppressors. In the mighty name of Jesus, this is a fight to finish. I'm not going to die for this country. I'm going to live for it. Nigeria will prosper in my lifetime. Nigeria will be saved. Nigeria will be changed. Nigeria will become great. It is the wicked that the land will vomit. In the name of Jesus. Somebody say war. War. The people said, to your tent, O Israel. We have no portion in the house of Jesse anymore. Sovereignty is not in your hand. You are commander-in-chief of nothing except the people put you there. The highest office in the land is the highest the high, is the office of the citizen and the office of the president. Nigerians are going to rise. They are going to demand for their rights. Nigeria for Nigeria movement. In the name of Jesus. And I dare you to try to stretch your hand against me like you have done to others. Then you will know what I God sent me. I'm just empty. I'm just making noise. All right. Uh, well, uh, very interesting there. Mr. Kimball, are you still here? Well, I, I would be surprised if the federal government moves against him, okay? Uh, we've always said federal government should learn crisis management strategies. How many people, you know, I said last week, if you arrest hundreds of Sunday Bo and Namdekano, these agitations will continue. Okay, now again, it's Tony Bakari. Tomorrow we don't know who's next. How many people will government arrest? 
But like I said, let us aggregate all this opinion. Let us harmonize all these views and translate them into a voting power. Okay? We need an alternative political party to PDP and APC. Right now, the structure the two parties have, the structures are so massive that it's difficult for you to win an election unless you belong to those two parties. But if we begin to mobilize in a very meaningful manner, 2023 is not going to be like any other election year. But wow. we've got to go beyond radio and TV. We've got to go beyond all this that Pastor Parker is talking about. We've got to take action. Okay? Well, um... I've always believed in peaceful and legal change of government. Right? It's, it's a lot of work, if you know, what you're describing. You um, it is a lot of work. It's a lot of work. You know, it is and a lot if, of you, work. if you remember also the way the APC came about, you yeah. know, it was also a combination of these same political juggernauts, as yeah. they're called, yes. you know, who formed the APC. And so it's yes. going to be um, hard to imagine yes. that, you know, people from outside these same persons can form another political yeah. party that would be big enough. Um, but of course, the Nigerian it, it, people it, and their population and their voting numbers should, you know, expected to, is expected to be big enough to push away any yeah. political party. We, um, we'll, we'll see how it goes. I want to finally just ask you to speak on um, stories uh, okay. concerning insecurity. It says abductors seek, seek 150 yeah. million naira to free a monarch, I believe is the one in southern Kaduna that was kidnapped a couple of days ago. And also, a DPO yeah. and six gunmen uh, uh, were killed in a gunfire in Imo State. I saw that video clip also earlier this morning. Yeah. Uh, quickly share your thoughts on that yeah. before we go. Okay. Remember when the service chiefs were replaced, uh, I think about three or four months ago, yes. we did say that nothing would change, really. Okay, you, you, you can change service chiefs every month. The fundamental issues leading to unrest, leading to kidnapping, they've not been addressed. There's anger in the land. There is anger in the land. People are not happy with the government. Okay? Security has broken down. Even the armed forces, the police, um, the, 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 the army, everybody is not happy. There's no way you can fight insurrection or, or, or insurgents successfully where you do not even, where you can't even trust the loyalty of those who are fighting the war. It, it, it's not going to work. Things are broken down irretrievably. That I don't see how we're going to be able to manage the situation. It will continue like this probably till, the, till 2023 when the next election will come up. Yeah. Because these guys, they have infiltrated every aspect of Nigerian society. If soldiers are being kidnapped, if monarchs are being kidnapped, then what is the hope for the common man? For the yeah. ordinary citizens, these are people who are supposed to have some level of personal security. Yeah. So insecurity has eaten deep into the fabric of Nigerian society. All right, there is right, nothing Sakimura. that can be it seems. Or so it seems. All right, let's uh, wrap up here. Thank you very okay. much um, for your time this morning. It's um, interesting hearing your Thank perspective you, on on these issues. We wish you a beautiful day ahead. Thank you, sir. Absolutely. Stay with us here on The Breakfast to take a short break. When we come back, what happened on this day in history? I'm going back to 1984 and 2002. And then right after that, our first major conversation for today comes up. We'll be back.